Hey, how are you? Um, sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. My little guy is feeling a little under the weather, so I have to get him um, ready. So I'm going to just wait and have a few people pop on. Um, and once I see a couple of people popping on, we will get going. <laughs> Let me just see who's coming on. And we're going to go. Very excited. All right, somebody's on. Um, please share away, because you know what? This is something that I get questions about all the time. Um, you know, what should I do to stay on track? Is Ramadan a good time to, you know, get started with your nutrition and all this? So it's really, really important, guys, because um, we have to um, just, you know, focus on having, we, we definitely 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 are focusing on our um, on our spiritual health and we're working on ourselves um, mentally and spiritually but part of that is also taking care of ourselves um, physically as well and making sure that we get the right nutrients and you know nourish our bodies during this so I see a couple of people on can you share me like show me some hearts or likes or something like that um, so that I know that Everything's coming through. Can you hear me? Um, and please, 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 um, I, I don't ask anybody to generally um, share unless, like, I really, truly think that um, I try and share things that are just um, of value. <laughs> hey, Shilu, how are you? Oh, lots of hearts from you. Um, but please share this. Um, you know, invite friends because this is something that is so vitally important. And so many of us just... Um, are, are very, um, we get so fatigued, especially with these fasts, and these fasts in, um, during the month of Ramadan and in the summer, when it falls in the summer here for us, I know that other parts of the world have it a lot longer than we do. Um, but 16 hour fasts are seriously no joke, okay? Um, and I used to, I remember the you know, before and now, like the last time Ramadan was in the summer like this was when I was in like elementary school. And um, I know I, you know, ran around and, you know, there were like ice cream trucks coming and stuff like that. Um, but I would just get like schlogged and I would totally eat the wrong things. And I see it happening again and again and again. And I'm getting a lot of questions from people about, um, what to eat and how to get in the nutrition and oh my gosh our our the time you know from sunset um to sun up is so short and we are focused on you know ibada and duas and everything and then we try and squeeze in all these things and a lot of us are working and have like businesses or careers and our kids are still in school like how do we focus and those are the types of questions that i'm getting um, privately and via um, you know text messages so I figured if I'm getting this many messages from people I'm guessing a lot more people have questions and so I said you know this would be a great way to serve um, as many people as I can because honestly if if we've got any knowledge we really should share it and that's I wholeheartedly believe it mm. so um, please I, I I see like two people on, and I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining. Um, and I just really wanted to give you the knowledge and share with you the things that have worked through the last three Ramadans, and all those have been hot and long. Um, and I have to say, I um, am really blessed because um, I think I've been given this opportunity to really, um, I've been able to work on myself. I've been able to find things that work. And um, I've gotten a lot of support from a lot of community members. Um, and I feel I have to share. Um, I've, able, I've been able to keep my fitness, my health, and my nutrition on track through these long, hard summer months of fasting. And I get asked like, how? I still manage to work out and I've supported hundreds of people working out um, throughout the years. Um, Alhamdulillah, really blessed. <laughs> I think, you know, the scope of um, the numbers like just hit me. But during the month of Ramadan, it's hard. 
Um, but in our groups, we've, we've come up with ways and tips and tricks, and I want to share them with you. And I want to share them with everybody because it's, it's a way in which we can share health. We can share wellness um, because we are holistic. We are not just, um, you know, one-dimensional. We don't just live in a bubble. We are there, we live in a community, and part of that is sharing our knowledge and sharing what we learn. And um, I have to say, with each passing year, I realize that we get a little bit better, we get a little bit stronger. So if we just implement one change, one thing, um, we can just continue and build upon that, and you get this huge like influx of positivity that comes into your life. So please, please, please continue to share, comment, um, post any questions you have, because I should be able to see it. I'm actually going to start this on my phone so I can follow along and see what's going on. Um, but uh, there we go. Okay. Hey, Salam Saba, how are you? Good to see you. All right. Any tips or help? All right, Zebra. I'm actually going to um, silence the feedback. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So in terms of the long hours. I will tell you one thing. Um, it's really, really, really important that we do focus on sleep. And part of that is going to be a real challenge for me, quite honestly, because, um, you know, because of the early hours of work. So over the past few years, I've actually implemented something um, that I do go to work a little bit earlier. I come home, but I take a nap. Um, and let me tell you, if you think it's amazing when your kids nap, it is beyond amazing. It's like a whole new life force enters into you when you take a nap because you will feel refreshed and you will feel rejuvenated. One of my friends was saying like, naps are life during Ramadan and I cannot agree more. Um, the second big tip, because you know what? The sleep thing is really important. A lot of times we're, we're up late at night with the duas, with the amals, with the activities, um, with families getting together because having family together time at the iftar table is important. Um, whether your iftar table is at your home, whether the iftar table, um, you know, so to speak, is at the mosque or community center, it's important um, to connect with others because we share energy, we share positivity, we share, um, you know, the things that we learn, we discuss things, and we build a sense of community that we just, you know, you can't, you can't get that any other place. Sabra, I'm glad you take a nap. Is it a nap? Oh, who put a sad face through? I'm sorry. Did I say something upsetting? Um, <laughs> oh, Audrey, you put a sad face through. I don't know why. Um, but... <laughs> um, the second thing, please, 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 um, do not try and focus all of your calorie intake into one meal. Um, iftar is crucial. It is crucial because your body's been going through a period of fasting for 16 hours. And we're not just talking about going without food. We're talking about going without water. Um, part of fasting, for those of um, you on this um live broadcast who are not Muslim, the goal of fasting is to um, kind of take yourself to another level, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So we withhold food for a certain time for, for many reasons. First of which is it's good for your body and your digestive tract. Researchers and scientists are only learning this now but about the importance of fasting. You hear, you're going to hear about so many, Salam Gala, you're going to hear about so many um, diets and, you know, uh, journals and studies that are talking about the importance of what resting your digestive tract, resting your gut has to do with um, rejuvenating your body and letting your gut heal. Okay, because sometimes we're in this, I mean, in our society, quite honestly, in the Western world, we are inundated with food, everything. Um, it's a sensory overload. It's like 
bam, 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 coming at you from all ends. If it's not sitting there, you know, like um, supersizing everything, there's stuff on TV, there's, you know, advertising in papers, this, wherever, and it's all focused on um, a quick fix, a nutrition, like it's an overload. Everything is, um, it's, it's kind of the sensations and it's like an, it's overwhelming to your senses and your taste buds and your digestive tract. Um, you, you know, I talk about how um, food is meant to be fuel, um, but more than that, what's happened now, it's that people aren't ha satisfied with what is natural because the, the food industry, marketing, all this, has built itself up to kind of heighten a lot of flavors and sensations and things like that. So what happens? Like the natural sweetness of dates, of fruits, is not enough for us anymore. We have to have a hit of sugar. Like it literally is like sugar, the natural sugar, the natural mellowness that exists in pure sugar, like pure cane sugar, raw sugar in its natural form. If you look at that, taste for taste, it's very different than the white sugars. It's very different than the artificial sweeteners. But what's happened is that society and marketing and the food industry has said, you know, like, yeah, an apple's really good, but let's take apples and pair them with a lot of sugar and then put some ice cream on them. And let me tell you, so apple pie a la mode is great sometimes, but, you know, you don't have to have everything that becomes this, like, a hundred times over, like magnified. It doesn't need to be like that. But what happens is sugar and all these, you know, additives and things that heighten the tastes and sensations, they work at a cellular level in our bodies and in our brains. It hits us right here. There have been studies that actually show that sugar activates the same brain, the centers in your brain as drugs do. <laughs> So it really is addictive. So when we're constantly bombarding our bodies with all these things that are like supersized, this, fried this, um, you know, like hyper sweet and all these things, it has our digestive system doing a lot of overtime work constantly. Now imagine that you never gave, doesn't matter how great the machine is, you never gave it a rest. Imagine what that machine would be like. It would get overworked. It would get overheated. It would burn out. So only now is science discovering that there is benefit in taking food only over a certain number of hours and allowing the rest of the time for your body to heal. We've known this for thousands of years. We've been doing, we've been following the fasting as it's been put down to us from God through the prophets to us. In, in Christianity, there's fasting. In Judaism, there's fasting. In all, you know, major um, belief systems, there's been this concept of fasting and fasting for rejuvenation, fasting for healing. Yes, in Ramadan, our month of fasting moves <laughs> throughout the year. So it's a lunar calendar. So, you know, I don't know, 10 years, 11 years down the line, the fast will seem easy, it will be easier because, well, the days are shorter. But right now we're going through that, that the, some of those peaks where it is harder. But you know what? We get through it. We get better. We learn. And our bodies adapt. Our bodies are very, very, very um, adaptive creatures. They're great machines. No better machine has been created. That's the truth. So there is a health benefit to fasting. And what happens, though, is that what we've been doing for years culturally and in our families and the different communities has been that we take those those hours of fasting and I will tell you this it's going to be the first like two or three days that are hard after that it gets easier think back to all those other Ramadans that have gone and that's the truth that's what happens 
So in those in those hours where we're fasting, we're focusing on um, our spiritual self. It's it's a fast of multiple senses. You're also not supposed to talk. Um, about others. You're not supposed to talk bad about others. You're not supposed to do injurious things. You're not supposed to smoke. You're not, you know, you're, I mean, you shouldn't be smoking anyway, but if you do smoke, you're not supposed to smoke. You can't. It invalidates your fast. You are not um, supposed to, you know, say false things about other people. You're not supposed to engage in things that would bring harm to yourself, your body, or to others. So it's a fasting that's on many, many levels, okay? So during these periods of fasting, we, we focus on the food and the water because, yes, our bodies feel it, okay? But focusing on all the other aspects is helpful too. Now, when we, we focus also during Ramadan about on ibadah, of, on prayers, on spiritual healing, I want us to also focus on physical healing because that is very, very true, okay? Um, you withhold food and water, but you do, you do, you find that there's a sense of calm that comes over you. Yes, initially, if you've been, you know, very dependent upon caffeine and things like that, you're going to get withdrawal symptoms. That alone should be a little trigger that says maybe I'm a little too dependent upon it and my body doesn't really need it to survive um, but maybe I can do a little bit with a little bit less it's just a cue okay um, I I like my cup of chai like everybody else I like a cup of coffee every once in a while I intentionally cut down the amount of coffee that I was taking because I was able to get natural energy sources to fuel me um, and I preferred that as opposed to the ups and the downs that come with caffeine and sugar and things like that. But what we focus a lot on in Ramzan is that iftar meal and I found um, and it holds through to many communities, ah oh, the light is coming in, it's beautiful, um, I found in many communities that um, we sometimes do iftar in a not so healthy way. Um, you've gone through the day not eating, not drinking, and then suddenly you're having a really heavy meal. I need you, I, I, I would recommend to all of you to break your fast um, as per the traditions with a little bit of salt and some water or some dates, which are a really great natural energy source. They are packed with um, natural sugars that digest and release slowly so that you don't get that rush high and going down. They're packed with magnesium and potassium so that you can fuel your body and replenish some of those electrolytes that your, body's, that your body wasn't able to get. So it's a really dense, concentrated um, energy source, but it won't give you that rush and fall. Um, and water, because you need to drink water. You should sip that water, don't gulp it because you will feel very, very sick if you're drinking a lot of water all at once after being without water for 16 hours. So that's a, my first tip if you're going to, uh, you know, when you break your fast. Secondly, that I actually take a little break after I do that. Um, a lot of times it varies whether I'll um, pray, you know, I, I usually say my prayers and then I'll come back and have like a meal. Usually, um, there are t when I'm home, that's about the time that I get a little workout in, or I do my workout right before iftar time comes, so that I can break my fast along with a little bit of um, dates and some water to rehydrate. I will make sure that that's not a hard cardio workout, though, because that becomes a physically tasking thing after being without food and water for so long. Um, but our, let's focus on the food a little bit right now. Um, a lot of our traditions culturally have to have us eating or usually seeing um, a feast happening. And I know we eat with our eyes are bigger than our stomachs, but a lot of people really just kind of go all in at once. 
and usually it's with foods that are very, very heavy, um, fried foods, feeds, foods that are, um, you know, heavy red meats, um, foods that are high in sugar. I see a lot of people breaking their fast instead of drinking water or occasionally some natural fruit juices or making things like lassies or smoothies, which are really refreshing, have a lot of vitamins, a lot of nutrients. Um, they're refreshing because they're usually nice and cold. They're packed with vitamins um, and antioxidants and all of this, and they're, they're natural. They're naturally sweet, and you can accentuate it with a little bit of honey. But instead of having things like that to hydrate themselves, I see a lot of people turning towards um, sodas, which, again, loaded with sugar, and even if it's the um, zero or the diet varieties, loaded with artificial sweeteners, which have a heightening um, sense of wanting sweets because it's heightened sweetness, and it's all chemicals. Um, so you add no nutritive values, um, and you're putting this stuff in your body that your body is just kind of cleansed itself or starting to cleanse itself, and you're suddenly doing in all these chemicals and processed foods in there that your body has then to work super hard to try and break down and um, kind of leach out some of those toxins. So we're going through this rest period for our gut, and then we're throwing in chemicals, and we're throwing in very fatty foods and fried foods, which are really heavy and can sometimes just take a, do take a huge toll in terms of a, huge, a lot of time and, and energy to digest. Um, not, not to mention the fact that a lot of these are usually like deep fried and usually not fried in like healthy oils. They're usually fried in like canola or, you know, vegetable oils and things like that. And those are um, unstable oils. They're highly processed. So when you're choosing oils to cook with, um, if you're going to do a little bit of a shallow fry or something like that, use something like a grapeseed oil. Um, it, it's, it's more natural. It can tolerate the high levels, higher levels of heat compared to olive oil. You can use coconut oil in your cooking, um, you know, and just listen to your bodies because have you felt that sense of, oh, oh, after you eat something fried, right? Your digestive system just kind of feels like you just sucker punched it. Well, your body's trying to tell you something and you're more apt to perceive it because you've gone through this like fasting and cleansing time during the day. So you're able, you're, you can really be sensitive to what the signals, you, what, what signals your body's trying to give you. The other, the other mistake I see a lot um, is that I see people um, kind of want to eat the world. Um, and the world of their feast usually has no vegetables there at all. And guys, you need the vegetables, number one, um, lots and lots of vitamins lots of nutritive value in vegetables. Really, if you're going for anything, like a lot of bang for the buck, you're gonna get fiber too. And um, a lot of people, um, myself included in the past, had digestive issues, a slowing down because we're not able to flush water throughout the day in our digestive system, so the plumbing gets slow. Show me by likes or something that you understand where I'm getting at. Otherwise, I can really just blurt it out. Do you, get, do you get where I'm going with this slowing down of digestion by not putting water and flushing out our digestive system all regularly during the day? Do you get it? Oh, no likes. Okay. Um, aha, okay, there they are. <laughs> all right. So you want to be more regular. Guess what's going to help you be more regular? Vegetables and fruits. You need that fiber. You need that fiber. You can get it also when you blend smoothies. If you're not a huge vegetable fan, and I know quite a few of those, I do, I know quite a few of those people, um, blend it into your smoothies. Add, you know, fruits, fiber-filled fruits, which are like apples and pears and kiwis and, uh, you know, like put those in smoothies and berries. Oh, my God. Let's not even get started on the, the, the antioxidant power of berries. Make smoothies guys. 
um, and have those alongside your food. Number one, you won't sit there and like inhale the food. Have conversations, you know, and include fruits and vegetables in with your iftar meal. And I will also tell you this, one of the reasons I say have conversations, it's because we physically need a cue to slow down our eating because it's really easy. Imagine you're like somebody who's, who's been deprived of food, um, who's gone like through the desert, because sometimes it feels like the desert when we walk outside and it's 95 degrees like it was, um, was it yesterday? Um, and imagine, you know, like going for 16 hours and not having eaten. I understand. It's the sensation that, ah, uh, I want to eat everything, but slow it down. Because what will happen is, if you don't, you're going to just kind of go like this. It takes 20 minutes. It takes a full 20 minutes for your body to get the, the signal, the chemical signal, from your stomach up to your brain to actually say, I'm full. So if you're saying, I'm full, like right now I'm full, you were actually full 20 minutes ago. Um, and that's why so many times we, we do this, we like, oh, I'm so full, right? Um, that's, that's what happens at the Thanksgiving table. That's what happens at Eid feast. That's what happens, you know, at Christmas time when all these other goodies are out there. Um, we get overly full, but when we slow it down and we have conversations, I have to take a sip of water, sorry. <coughs> And we engage and we just take a break and savor what we have because these are all blessings the fact that we do have food to open our fast with is a huge blessing which I think a lot of us overlook at times because we take it for granted part of Ramadan is um, putting us in tune with um, and, and making us a little bit more empathetic to those that are less fortunate, who don't have as much, who may not be breaking their fast with a table full of food that, mashallah, most of us will um, have um, at iftar time. So take a moment and reflect. And one of the hadiths I know was talking about, you know, um, eating not till you're full. That was one of the things that the Prophet did and all the Aima did do. It's because it's good for your body to leave space, to not eat till you're full, because we get lazy and we get sluggish and we don't move our bodies. And that sluggishness carries over into other aspects of our life. So take it slow. Um, but do eat healthful things. If you look at um, the traditions, there were things like nuts on the table, there was kajur, there was um, usually some sort of bread type thing, you know, that was there. There was, there was maybe some meat, usually not a very heavy fatty, you know, um, meat because um, it's, it's harder to digest that. And your, your system is just coming off of a rest phase. So you want things that are a little bit lighter and easier. So in heavy, oily things, especially during these summer months when it is, you know, when, when we eat late because our iftar time is so late, grill your foods, bake them, you know, broil them, make them a little lighter. Include a salad or some sort of vegetables. If you're not a fan of straight salads, cook a vegetable curry-based thing. Saute some things. Have that along. It's easier to digest and it pairs well with everything. Blend up a smoothie and have that instead of ruavza or pakola or Pepsi or Coke or Sun, you know, all those things that are usually staples. Another thing that also is great, and I know sometimes in the summer months you think, soup, really? But yes, things like lentil soup, things like chana, but not necessarily swimming in oil, like making a chat or something. It has a lot of fiber, it has some protein, you 
pair it in with vegetables. You, you put like, you know, onions and I put cucumbers and I put tomato and I put these things and you, you season it, but it's not swimming in oil. And those are the different ways where you can just lighten your recipes up just a little bit so that you're satisfied. Those taste sensations are satisfied. You are satisfying all those, you know, whatever your flavor profile is, whether you, you're, you know, you, you're kind of more on a Western um, eating, you know, Western type of food um, versus more Eastern food and cuisines. Um, maybe you, you know, things like Mediterranean cuisines and things like that. Occasionally changing things up and having like a, um, a taco night, but using like, you know, uh, small tortillas or, or even putting it in lettuce wraps is a great idea. You can still have a very hearty and satisfying meal that won't weigh you down. Because after iftar, we still have more duas coming along. We want to feel energetic. Now, um, but that shouldn't be your only meal. Because that's going to be at about, what, 8.30? Sometime between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Um, depending upon what time of the month and things like that. And our fasts, we have to close them, and our fasts start so early with sunup. So please, um, I know a lot of you, I was guilty of the same. I did not wake up for sahri, whether you call it suhu or sahri, whatever it is. I used to not wake up for it. I would keep a cup of water at my bedside, and sometimes I would wake up and quickly take a gulp, and sometimes I wouldn't. And I guarantee you, I used to feel so exhausted during the day. I did. And I know sleep is important. I do, I get that. Um, but there's a sense of, there's a sense of just connecting with your family. Um, I have to thank my husband for setting this tradition in place, um, that he made sure that when our kids started fasting, that he's like, no, they can't just um, they can't just, you know, eat something before they go to bed. That's not, well, we know that that's not great for you, right? Because you're eating and then you're going to bed on a full stomach. So it's hard. It doesn't digest. It's not healthy. Um, so we're going to wake up and we're going to have a sehri together. And then we'll pray. And then you can go back to sleep. For me, my work schedule is such that I usually try um, to, to go to, to, to do a little bit of work around the house and then go to work because it's really hard for me to fall back asleep once I'm awake. But that doesn't have to be the case for you. But having that sehri in, um, will actually fuel you throughout your day and you can get in a little bit more water. You can do, um, you can do smoothies in the morning. You can do foods that are very nutritious but not so heavy. Um, you can have eggs or a great meal to have at that time. Um, things like peanut butter toast or avocado toast, you know, you throwing chia seeds into your smoothies, excellent ideas. You know, having a yogurt parfait. I actually go with my shake and sometimes I'll have like a little something alongside. Um, but I don't feel a lack of energy. I don't feel a lack of nutrition. But that's because I've fueled my body. So I'm taking that, let's say, this year it's going to be about an eight hour window of time in which I have, I have a small little something to just kind of get my stomach ready to say, okay, I'm going to start feeding you now. Okay. Um, I take care of my spiritual needs as well. And I have a meal. It's a sensible meal. I don't overdo it because I should, I don't need to overdo it. I don't, I know that there will be food available to me again. It's not that that's my only meal and I'm not going to be eating for another 24 hours. I know that there's time because I also don't want to feel like that crash that happens because when we put too much food into our system all at once, we do all sorts of craziness with our blood sugar levels and our insulin levels. We cause all things to fluctuate and it's, we still do have that eight hour window of time. You can still do that iftar meal. You can still do a light snack like two hours later, whether that light snack is, you know, a, a fruit salad, whether that light snack is some sort of yogurt with fruit, which is a great, satisfying, feels like a dessert sort of a meal, but it hits that spot. 
Um, or maybe that meal can be something, you know, along, I usually do like a fresh fruit platter, put some peanut butter or something along there, and something that pairs very nutritious, clean, wholesome foods. You know, um, sometimes some people actually like to do a little bit of cheese, some nuts, some fruits, kind of like your typical cheese platter, crudités and things like that. That's a great idea to have it around that time. And then a lot of times, especially because it is during these summer months, we're up late. We're hanging out with family. So we're up a little bit longer. And then at that point, then later you go and you get a little bit of sleep. You, granted, I know sleep is broken, but you can get that. You can get your sleep in and then make sure you do take a nap because there are those pockets of time when you can. And then wake up. Have a sehri. I'm not telling you to create a gourmet meal. Not at all. Um, but I am saying make it very intentional because you need to fuel your body. Your body knows and it has cues and it has triggers and it knows. Well, she fed me iftar. There was a little something here and there's a sehri coming. I'm good for the next 16 hours. That's what's going to happen. That's that shift that happens. And your body actually goes into a very cleansing mode at that point. You, it doesn't have to overwork. It's not like you're running the engine on fumes. You are fueling it. And you're choosing clean foods. You know, don't, don't be eating like, you know, things that come in boxes, like Twinkies and things like that. I know. I'm sorry for the Twinkie lovers and the Ho-Ho lovers, and I know, I, I, I feel you. I was there before, but, but I, I grew up and I, I know better now. <laughs> um, and don't eat heavily salted foods either, because what's that going to do? That's going to trigger your, your thirst, uh, your thirst um, kind of sensation, you know, the trigger in your mind. Um, but... You need, to, you need to be able to do that. And I guarantee you, your fast during the day will be a lot easier. Um, the other thing is, there's so many very high water content fruits that you can totally take advantage of. Um, melons, you know, watermelon, cantaloupe, um, honeydew. Remember what I told you about fiber? Because that will come into play. Because many, many, many people many, many, many people suffer from a slowing down during Ramadan, but that won't be you. And if it was you in the past, it's not going to be you this year because you're going to remember what I told you and you're going to sip at water or seltzer or whatever it is. You're going to make some smoothies, right? You're going to have those instead of, instead of those high sugar thing, uh, sugar drinks, and you're going to eat your melons and fruits and berries. That, that alone is going to make your Ramadan so much easier, so much easier. You're going to thank me every day. I promise you that, okay? Um, I know if you've ever had, like, you know, uh, lots and lots of watermelon, you know, it's very satisfying. It's thirst quenching because it's got a really high water content. Um, so even in terms of vegetables, Go for vegetable, you know, put extra cucumbers in, really high water content. Put celery into things because high water content, good fiber content, really low in calories. But at this point, right now, honestly, I don't worry about calories. I just worry about the cleanness of the food. So that basically, in a nutshell, is the lowdown on the nutrition part, the food part. Unless you've got some questions, put those in the comments here. But now let's move on to workouts and activities and exercise and movement, okay? And I know this past week here in, the, in New York has, was, was really hot. It cooled down for the weekend, but it's been in the 90s, and it's, it takes a toll on your body. And if you're working outdoors, I will say, please take caution. Make sure you, you're, you get into the shade, you know, take a shower. It's refreshing for you. Um, it'll be a way for your body to cool off as well. And obviously, um, you know, take care um, if you feel dizzy or lightheaded or if you feel like, you know, it's dangerous to your health, please um, reach out to your medical doctor and find out if it's safe for you to fast. Um, but... Let's talk about activity and movement because it's, 
a lot of times what happens is, you know, we, we think that our health and nutrition goals and um, routines need to come to a standstill and a halt because of Ramadan, because we just have no energy. Well, part of that is because we're not putting the right foods into our bodies. So we've already covered that in the first half, right? Okay. Um, and now you'll find that a whole lot of natural energy, I will guarantee you, guarantee you, day one and day two, you're going to feel extra sluggish. You're going to feel like you're going slower than the tortoise in that race. Um, and you're, you're, going, you're going to feel it because it's a change. And anytime you make a change, your body says, ah, what's going on? What's she doing to me? So a lot of us have started fasting a day here, a day there, a day here. It, I mean, it's beneficial. It's recommended according to a lot of um, hadiths and teachings. It's not mandatory, but it's a way in which we can also acclimate to um, the, the fasts that are coming up. A month of fasting is a long time, but it's a way of preparation, okay? And so what also happens is I, you know, I have a lot of people who are doing different workout programs, and the beauty of what our offerings now include is that there's an entire variety of programs. So if the program that you're doing, the workout is like a, an intense cardio, you bring it down a couple of notches and you modify it. You don't have to run unless you're running, you know, pre-dawn and it's really cool out and you can hydrate by all means. But the majority of us are getting a little bit of sleep to rejuvenate our bodies. Um, so to you, I say, take your cardio down a notch. Unless you're the only, and and I will say that when when I recommend cardio gets done, if you want to stick to doing a cardio routine, you're you know it's it's on the schedule and that's what you want to do and you want to stick to it. And the best time to do a cardio based workout is like I said, um, you break your fast with some kajur or some fruits. Maybe you know like my daughter doesn't like kajur. She doesn't like dates. But she likes them in energy bites. Go figure, right? It works. Um, but doing, um, break your fast with some kajur and some water. Say your namaz and go work out. But you don't have to do an hour long workout. You don't have to do an hour and a half workout. Um, we have plenty of offerings that workouts that are ranged from like 10 minutes, 22 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, on average, you can get a really great total body workout, even a cardio workout, in only 30 minutes. And if you don't know, let it, let's talk, okay? But we're not getting into that right now. This is just about um, how and when to implement things. But I have many, many, many women in our groups, and men. Actually, I don't want to forget about the men in our groups because they're really doing an amazing job. Um, but I have many people in our groups um, who are on a, on a workout program, doing their fitness programs, and doing these months of Rajab, and doing them now in Shaban, they have been intermittently fasting here and there with, on days and still committing to their workouts, still showing up, because they do these little things. They will if they're doing a morning workout in the early morning when they are fasting, they are modifying and they are not doing heavy cardio workouts. They are doing weight based with a little bit of, um, you know, they, they bring the cardio down a notch. Okay. And that's their, then they're sticking to their morning routines of their five, six, seven, eight AM workouts, whatever that, whatever that is. Um, and if you're working out during the day while you're fasting, then I would say you still need to bring your intensity and the level of workout down a little bit. Weight-based programs, not a problem. Go for it, okay? Um, but but if, you're, if you want to stick with a cardio workout, then do it after you break your fast, but before you have your iftar meal, if you want to just get it out of the way and get it done, you also have the option of doing it right before iftar, but you will fatigue and you will find that you can't really go into it as much and you'll probably bring the intensity down a little bit and that's okay. Um, but if you want to go all in, my recommendation is 
um, some kajur, maybe a little bit of energized, some water, and then you can go for it. And then afterwards you can recover, um, bring your heart rate down, do your cool down, and then go for your iftar. And make sure that if that you're nourishing your body, right? And be thankful because all this time, look at what our bodies can do. The other option for people who want to continue with their workouts and not bring it down a notch, still continue with that intensity, is that you have your, you break your fast, you have your iftar. Before you have another meal, a mini meal we'll call it, or a snack or whatever it is, um, two to three hours later, Get your workout in about two hours after your iftar, um, depending upon the heaviness, because maybe, maybe you'll be okay at one and a half hours, but usually it's about at that one and a half or two hour mark where you'll be, you know, your, you, your stomach won't be totally full, so you're going to be okay to go for it, um, and then you can work out at that time. If you're feeling like you're an amazing rock star and, you know, you want to get up a little bit earlier than suhoor and you want to get your... Let's, at, at that point, I would say, please, just do like a workout that's like 20 to 30 minutes long. We have plenty of options for you. There's so many things, and there's an entire library at your fingertips, literally at your fingertips on your computer. Um, we have lots of choices, and I can pair you up with a program that's right for you to get you to your goals. Um, then you can do it before you have your suhoor meal, because then you can still hydrate during the workout, and then you can still have your post-workout meal, but just make sure you're taking like a second protein in there to just kind of repair and recover some of those, that uh, the energy stores that you just worked your body through. But you will be, I guarantee you, you will be revving up your metabolism. Now, for my people who say that, you know, I can't, I'm not on a workout plan or I'm not on an exercise, I don't like going to gyms and um, I don't want to do a program. It's about movement. It's about just literally getting your body up and moving. So you, maybe we want, maybe you want to do a step challenge. Still get in 10,000 steps during the day. You can do that because it actually helps your digestion when you do that. Um, especially after iftar. And if you're saying that it's too hot, I will tell you that there are shopping malls that you can go to and walk. It doesn't have to be a, uh, a shopping trip, <laughs> but it's, um, it's, a, it's a large open space. You're not sitting there walking circles in your home. And hey, maybe mashallah, you have a very spacious home and you can just like do laps and get your 10K in and you're done. God bless. <laughs> but honestly, and if you can't get out of your house, march in place. March in place. Walk. There is power in movement. And I want each and every one of you to aim. So let's say right now you start tracking. Everybody's got a smartphone, guys. Everybody's got a smartphone. And there's apps, there's free apps to track steps. So it's not that, he, he, it's not that hard, it's not rocket science at all. Um, but I want you to track your steps. I want you to aim for 10,000 steps. Because what's stopping you? It's in our heads. And this entire month is about working on yourselves, your mind, your body, and your spirit, your whole self. So maybe you want to put some, and you don't want to be distracted, maybe you want to put some earplugs in, earbuds in, maybe you want to listen to Quran, maybe you want to hit, listen to some majlises, and you walk. If it's too hot outside, which chances are it will be, that's just the truth, walk around in home. What, if you feel distracted and you feel like you know walking around in the house, you're just going to get distracted and you're going to stop, or there isn't enough space, then go out, go to a mall, and go, go walk. There's, and especially during the day, just go. And if, you know, there, there's a lot of enclosed spaces. Go to Ikea, go to Costco. I mean, like, okay, we'll say don't go to Costco. You're going to start getting hungry. Don't go to Costco. Don't go to shopping uh, supermarkets, okay? Um, because I'm not going to ask you to torture yourself like that. But an enclosed space and go walk. There is so much, um, there's so many nutritional benefits and health benefits um, to increasing physical activity. And it need not be strenuous physical activity if that's not what you're used to the power of steps the power of walking the power of just 
setting a goal and accomplishing it. That's all it's about. It's about movement. And maybe you you know you want to do some low stress low um, low impact activities like yoga or Pilates, which are not straining. They're not you know high cardiac um, workouts, but it's a great way to focus on mindfulness, right? Yeah, I love malls. <laughs> it's ever it's a great way to focus on mindfulness because part of yoga talks about being mindful, being intentional, and centering yourself. Um, and kind of releasing everything else outside. It's there's a great benefit to that. That's what you know we focus to achieve when we do ibadah, when we pray. We focus to kind of like put out everything in the outside world. Well, what better way than to do yoga during that? Work on your flexibility. Work on core. Work on posture. Get all those muscles engaging. That reminded me about my posture as I'm sitting here. And it's a great way to get in a great workout without being um, overly strenuous or physically taxing. And that kind of workout, that yoga, simple walking, things like that, you can do it any point during the day. I will say this, do not do hot yoga during your fast, okay? Don't go into a hot 90 degree, 100 something degree studio. You're just going to ask to get dehydrated and you're going to... Um, damage your health. You're going to be injurious to your health. Um, I'm talking about a very calm, a very peaceful, kind of a zen sort of a state. Um, and do, do workouts of yoga or Pilates. Um, focus on posture. Focus on strength. There is focusing on balance and just being very intentional and being in that moment. There's a lot of value to that. And it also, when you kind of put out all these other you know, the, the noise that sometimes comes into our head from the outside world, when you intentionally work on putting that out, you will find a, a sense of calm that kind of takes over every aspect of your life, um, from your prayers to, you know, being in tune with what your body is going through, and it'll carry over to the rest of your day as well. So those are a couple of tips that I have, um, and if you have any questions, please, please, please um, post them here. I'm happy to help. Um, I will be opening up, um, kind of um, resurrecting the Ramadan Healthy Ramadan Challenge, um, which is an open group for everyone worldwide. We're going to just support each other with healthy ideas. Um, We've done in the past a no fried food challenge um, because you can get very, very creative. Um, I just got an air fryer. I, don't, I haven't opened it. Um, I literally got it. Um, it was ordered and, and it, I got it last night. Um, but, you know, I'm going to be playing around with that. It's new to me. Um, but it's a great way in which if you want that crunch, because sometimes it's a sensory thing and you want that crunch, air fryers are a great option. Um, honestly, sometimes I just spray a little bit of like oil, um, olive oil, grapeseed oil, um, you know, um, coconut oil onto my samosas or spring rolls and then I bake them. Um, convection oven, toaster oven, whatever it is, right? And they come out really crispy. They satisfy that crunch effect without being heavy and oily and weighing down. Um, Oh, how to eliminate foot cramps. Okay, so sometimes because we get a little bit dehydrated, um, we can get cramping of the muscles. So a couple of things. Number one, please um, hydrate. So make sure you're getting in enough water. Now, enough is very relative. Um, I will still, during, during Ramadan, get in about 10 glasses of water um, between um, iftar time and sehri. Sometimes, honestly, more because I'm in the habit of drinking more water. Um, because I break my fast with one to two glasses of water and some kajur or some salt. Um, the other thing is also make sure you're getting those berries, those um, vegetables in, okay? Because you need to get in your magnesium and your potassium. So, kajur, one of the reasons that I keep mentioning them is. They have magnesium. They have potassium. That your body needs that, and when you're not getting it through your foods, and you're you're kind of um, 
you're in this dehydrated state. Your muscles don't have enough water. The electrolytes are seeped out and you actually get cramping. So that is something that I do recommend and um, using coconut water, which has natural electrolytes. So I forgot to mention that. So thank you, Sabra, for asking the question about the cramps. Um, if you if you want to drink water throughout, but maybe you know intermittently you can do coconut water. A great idea is to make um, because it gets really hot and you want something you know you want something that's like cold and dessert like and stuff like that. Make popsicles out of coconut water and put berries in, um, and that is like you know that's a popsicle in the popsicle molds, and that's a great popsicle to suck on. You get natural the natural sweetness of the coconut and the coconut water and the berries. Um, you know, you can put kiwi in there, you can put um, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, um, you can put a little bit of mint in there to, 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 uh, to kind of season it. Um, but coconut water has electrolytes, magnesium and potassium that your body needs. So um, having enough water throughout the day, plus foods that ha contain magnesium, potassium and these vitamins. Um, so having, you know, some dark leafy greens. Don't go for the iceberg lettuce. At least go for romaine. Go for spinach. Go for kale if you're up. If you feel feel like it, um, it ha it's a different sort of a texture. Um, but include things that have like nuts and seeds because there are good fats that come from there, um, and your body needs those. But also um, the the hydration is key. Kajur is very important. Coconut water is a great idea. Um, making sure you get enough sleep is another thing. And here's a little something that most people don't know about. Um, and actually, I'm waiting for mine to come in the mail, um, partially because muscles cramp because of lack of magnesium. But you can't take an abundance of magnesium into your GI tract because guess what? Too much magnesium in your GI tract makes you go to the bathroom. It flushes you out. And then you get dehydrated because you're flushing out too much. Um, you know, things like milk of magnesia, citrate of magnesia. Okay, that is why it has that effect, that laxative effect. Um, your digestive tract is, is very sensitive to electrolyte imbalances. Um, so too much magnesium, you're going to go. The floodgates will open. You don't want that. Okay. Um, but you do need magnesium, potassium, zinc to get those cell channels to open and the fluids to kind of go in and out of the cells at the rate that they're supposed to, to keep that fluid balance and electrolyte balance proper. Your muscles, when it goes a little low, you'll get cramps. They have fiber, it's muscle fibers. So when you get those cramps, it's usually that your electrolytes are running a little bit low. And so you replete those electrolytes. So if you must, you know, even having things like Pedialyte or things like that. But um, this is a great tip. Um, there is a topical magnesium in a spray form. Um, actually, it comes, you can, you can get it on the internet. Um, there's many varieties and you can search it. Um, but topical magnesium spray or gel works great. Um, and it absorbs through the skin, so you don't have the laxative effects that it has on the GI tract, um, but you get the ease of the foot cramps. It's also a great idea to spray that like on your, um, your legs, your calves, um, if you're having like cramps like, you know, in your back and things like that, spray a little bit and kind of rub it in. It's a little gentle massage for yourself, but it's also um, very, very soothing and gives you a more restful sleep. So I'm going to start incorporating that into my sleep routine. I've um, been um, I've been educating myself on a lot more about nutrition because that's a passion of mine. Um, and uh, you know, and since I'm working on my sleep hygiene, I've been focusing on things like that and. It, I, I came across these topical magnesium sprays. I'm actually going to, it's a great idea to use during Ramadan. Um, you can use it nightly um, or as needed, you know, for, for the cramps. 
um, that you sometimes can get the Charlie horse or the foot cramps and things like that. And if you do see yourself getting cramps like that, um, I would say please um, make sure that you're getting enough of your electrolytes. Um, you can also drink um, tonic water, which has quinine in it, which helps with muscle cramps as well. Um, I've actually never drank it, but, um, but I know that that is one of the um, tried and true for centuries um, cure, but you know, how much quinine, uh, how much tonic water are you going to drink? <laughs> it has a little bit of quinine in there, but the topical magnesium is actually a great way um, in which you you absorb the magnesium through the skin, works on, works to the muscles. It does get, a, it apparently is a little bit sticky, um, but not sticky, sticky, sticky. So you want to do it at night, you know, um, let it absorb through the skin. You can get up and shower in the morning and that should really help you. I'm, uh, I would love some feedback, whether that's helping you. I will keep you posted on how that's doing for my sleep hygiene, as well as, um, I'm, I'm really planning on using that with, um, soccer going on there. Um, we have a tournament right after the month of Ramadan in Chicago and this fit mama is going to be going for it. So watch out for the fit hijabi on the, on the field. I hope I, um, well, it'll be an experience is all I got to say. First ever time, um, never played soccer before September of this past year. And, and I'm just going for it. Go big or go home. Right? So, um, I hope that helps in terms of muscle cramps, um, and another way to get in some of your electrolytes. Do we have any other questions? Um, let me see. So I also, um, wanted to find out, um, from, uh, all of you, what, so what are some of the way, what are some of the things that you have struggled with in the past years? Um, and uh, this way, you know, we can gather some of those, hey, Salam Shanaz, we can gather some of that information. Where have you struggled in the past in terms of your um, fasts, physically speaking? Um, you know, what do you struggle with in terms of, is it nutrition, is it hydration, is it um, energy levels, is it activity, um, is it you know, do you, do you feel a sense of fatigue? Have you gained weight? Have you lost weight? Have you felt, um, you know, uh, just kind of, I have over the past three years, Alhamdulillah, been able to lose a little bit of weight healthily. Um, but I've been able to maintain energy and maintain my fitness through there without feeling malnourished or deprived. And that's a huge thing for me. Um, and I wanted to share that and those tips with, with everybody. And that was, that's actually been my purpose in doing this, um, live seminar info session this year. Um, I did a session last year and, you know, there were a whole lot of questions that were, um, kind of being popped up through the feed. Um, and so it was great and engaging, but this year I have gotten, ah, okay. I, <laughs> um, I, I, this year it was, I'd gotten a bunch of messages and with some questions already. So I came at this slightly differently than I did last year. So Sabra, I know you had mentioned about the hydration and cramps and, um, you can stay without food. So the hydration, um, I would really use the tips that we spoke about, you know, don't, don't, um, don't, you don't have to go without food, but I want you to choose the right foods. And I want you to choose foods that are not going to cause a higher sensation of thirst. So, you know, avoiding fried foods because a lot of times we need, um, like there's a lot of oil and heaviness that happens with fried foods. And when it hits your stomach and when it hits your digestive tract, you kind of need to, it's, it's very, it's very heavy. So it needs to almost be diluted. And so you, it, it creates this sensation of thirst and you really need to drink more and more and more but you're not satisfied, but it's not, you know, it's, it's using it for digestion, not so much in terms of hydration and things like that, but also when you have a lot of salt in your foods, so you're doing very salty foods, then it's going to create, again, the sense of thirst that lingers long after. So you're constantly going to have the sensation that you're thirsty and it's, it's an insatiable thirst. So you're, you're going to be like, 
uh, you're not going to be able to get in enough water to counteract that. Um, but for you specifically, continue with your shakes, incorporate smoothies into your regimen, and incorporate high water content fruits and vegetables. Um, again, summer months, so we've got those melons, we've got those amazing berries, you know, they're, they're at our disposal, peaches and things like that, very high in water content. Um, you know, and, and I always have those throughout. Um, they're, they're usually included along with my iftar, they're like after iftar, and they're in my suhoor as well. So I'm still getting that. I'm still drinking water. So my water routine during Ramzan changes dramatically because on average, I drink about a gallon of water a day the rest of the year. That changes <laughs> in Ramzan, and that comes hot and heavy um, and pretty hard. Um, but what I usually end up feeling is I feel thirst, you know, usually a little bit later in the day. Um, and, you know, taking a nap helps. Um, but when I break my fast, it's usually with two cups of water and, you know, a kajur or two, sometimes three, um, because I love them. But I'm going to at intentionally try not to have too many of them for the sugar content and see how that goes. Um, but then with dinner, I'm having another glass or two of water, okay? Um, and then usually there's that name in Zithar, right? And then uh, about two hours after, so I'm, there's going to be lots of fruits happening. So lots of fruits get cut up. Pineapple, watermelon, cantaloupe. Um, actually, we go through a lot of watermelon in Ramzan. Um, cantaloupe, honeydew. Um, and then there's like, you know, apples and um, peaches and nectarines and things like that that really get eaten in my house over during this, during the time between um, iftar and then till a little bit before bedtime. Um, because these are really very high water foods, high water fruits, um, and they're really satisfying. So along with drinking my water, whether it's and this year I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of seltzer drink because there's a lot of seltzer that gets drank in my house now. Um, but in the past, it's been straight still water. Um, so, you know, water, um, whether it's flavored, infused, plain, sparkling, bubbly, I don't care. It's just water. Um, so two cups already at um, breaking fast. Two cups usually with um, iftar. One usually before, one usually afterwards. That's just how I do it. Um, usually about uh, an hour or two afterwards, there's at least a glass. There's going to be about a glass an hour being taken in. Um, but at every time, it's usually two. Um, so I very easily get in 10, uh, 10 glasses of water. Um, if you see me at uh, Mudgeless and you see me at the mosque, you always see me with water. Uh, in fact, and recently it's been seltzer, so it's been kind of embarrassing. It goes fizz, whatever, and I try and open it before I walk into the mosque, and then I just drink it. Um, and I have no qualms about going in with like a liter bottle of water um, because I know that I'm, I'm working on my own health and my own, I'm satisfying the, um, the needs of my body in a very helpful way. So yeah, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm the water person. Um, but you know, just making sure that you stay hydrated will help you with those cramps and will help you with that sensation. I know that working outdoors, the long commute, sitting in a car, um, those are things that can kind of heighten our sense of awareness for the thirst. Um, especially in these summer months, I would say during those peak hours when it's really hot, um, try and be indoors in a cool place. Um, I will also say this, um, try to wear cotton or linen or breathable fabric. Um, not cause your body to heat up. Um, and it, it, it's a wicking, cooling fabric that will actually help you kind of maintain that, you know, sense of like the the fluid balance almost with the skin because the skin breathes right and it gets hot so you don't want to be constantly sweating and sitting here and that's important too 
in terms of our health and wellness and nutrition because it has an overwhelming, it's kind of an all-encompassing sense of wellness that happens. Uh, let's see if anybody has any more questions. Hey, Sabah, you're back. Um, so let's see if anybody has any more questions about um, how to stay on track with our um, health goals and our wellness goals. Because, mashallah, a lot of us are just realizing the importance of taking care of our bodies because it is a gift from God. It is, um, it is our job to take care of our bodies. We are entrusted with that. As parents, we're also entrusted with, um, you know, raising our children to be more aware and to be, you know, these upstanding citizens of the world. And part of that is taking care of their bodies, you know, because we're part of this community on, on this earth. And we have responsibility to, to do well, do right by ourselves, do right by those that are our loved ones and our immediate family and to continue to spread that out and do right by others. So when we have found the, the gift of, you know, health and energy and vitality, it's incumbent upon us to share it with others. <laughs> That's what my thoughts are on that one. Um, all right, I'm not seeing any more questions happening. So I'm going to actually um, end on this note that, yes, the fasts are long, but they're a blessing because our bodies can take and they are so resilient. It's such, it's such an, a, a gratifying feeling to know that um, we are capable of this and of course it was trying to reconnect um, you know that are a way of letting bodies have that time in which it's not inundated with trying to continue with digestion and breaking down because in the West in today's society actually it's not just limited to the west unfortunately it happens all over the world um, we've been blessed alhamdulillah to travel to different parts of the world and i see it happening more and more in all other parts as well in the east we are blessed beyond measure and the month of ramadan is a time of reflection it's a time of self-evaluation and it's a time of us trying to cleanse our souls, our spirits, our mind, our bodies, and our hearts. And in that sense of cleansing and renewal, we get to feel that, that, that sense of overwhelming wellness that comes over us. How many of you have gone into Ramadan sometimes saying, oh, I'm so this, this fast and the this and the this and the this, and we just get in our own heads. We get in our own ways. And then Ramadan's over and we're like, that was so good. I feel like a brand new person. There's a reason for that. Because we have taken the time to cleanse. It's like an emotional, spiritual, physical scrub brush to our, to our entire self. And it's a way of kind of resetting. Now, physically speaking, we allow our digestive tract to kind of take a break and really just not be so overworked. We're not constantly putting food down our gullets. We're not. We're, we're, we're feeding, and it's meant to be that way. It's meant to be feed, take a break. Feed again, take a break. Feed again, take a break. If we were to carry these habits go into the rest of the year, beyond Ramadan, and I'm not talking, I don't mean, you know, eat 
during, you know, the hours of 9 to 3. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about eating within set times and then saying, that's enough, I'm satisfied. And then when you do feel that sense of, I think I need something, maybe you really needed water. Maybe you needed water. And let your digestive tract take that break. And let it heal. Let it do it, let it do its work that it does so well. Digestion, absorption, you know, the get, giving your body, we don't create our own energy. We take in the energy through food. So the energy that our bodies need to continue functioning comes through outside sources for us. That alone should set something, a trigger off to you saying, what am I putting in as fuel? And I hope you realize that, you know, the foods that are mentioned in scriptures are whole, natural, real foods. There's no mention of Twinkies. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm ragging on Twinkies today. Um, and I'm not sure why I haven't seen Twinkies in a long, long time. Um, but truth be told, they're whole foods. And when you nourish your body with that, it's easier to, for your body to recognize that, break it down for its nutrients, let the nutrients come into the body and let the waste come out. And then your body then gets to take a break where things aren't constantly coming in and it has to constantly be doing work. What we've done to our systems over time has been we're constantly putting things in. We're constantly putting things in. And our, and our digestive tracts have constantly got to work and fight and work and fight and digest and this. And, and a lot of the things are not natural and they're not whole. So the work that goes into it is so much harder. The inflammation that builds up is so much more. Islam and the month of Ramadan gives our bodies a natural break to let the inflammation start to subside, to let the noise die down. And when we do that, and during those periods where we do feed, we're feeding with whole foods and real foods, the body just works so much better. And it's, it's a way in which we can realize and recognize the areas that we need to improve. I hope these tips have been helpful. Please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to me with any questions that you might have. I am more than happy to share the knowledge. And I wish you a blessed month of Ramadan. I know it's fast approaching. Um, I will open up the uh, Ramadan Healthy Challenge. Um, it's going to be open to everyone. It's just a general support group. Um, people from all over the world, please. Um, I invite, I will post the information for it up um, by tomorrow. Please invite your friends. It's a free community, open community of sharing, of just embracing um, healthier changes, you know, eliminating some of the unhealthy habits that we may have gotten too used to and seeing the effect of eliminating those and what it does to our bodies. So it's just an open invitation to anyone and everyone from all over the world. We will share recipes. You can share tips and ideas. Um, you know, we can just, it's, it's, it's more of an interactive community. It's really, that's what it's meant to be. Um, and that's it. It's a way in which I can give back for all the blessings that I've been given. Alhamdulillah. So thank you so much for spending this part of your evening with me. Um, I will post this recording. And feel free to share away. You de definitely have my permission all the time. Feel free to tag friends that you think might find 
this information of some use and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about your own health and wellness goals during the month of Ramadan and beyond because maybe this is the kickstart that we all need in order to be the best versions of ourselves and keep working on ourselves every single day because every day is a blessing and we should definitely acknowledge and make the most of the blessings that we have in this world. Um, take care. Thank you again so much for sharing.